Okay, we are continuing with the laws of Lashon Hara. We're on <coughs> chapter 7, number 7. Klal Zayin, Halacha Zayin. And again, we're talking about the laws, the prohibition of listening to Lashon Hara. That just like there is a prohibition to speak Lashon Hara, there is also a prohibition to listen to Lashon Hara. So let's begin. V'ata naske levar bezuz Hashem din kabalas Lashon Hara, me'ishu hu mehemen kebei trei, now, we're going to talk about the laws of listening to Lashon Hara. If the person speaking to you is a very trustworthy person, there are certain people that are believed, meaning they're believed as if they have the status of two witnesses because they're so trustworthy. Uh, just to give a... Uh, a caveat here, the, the Chavetz Chaim writes in the Bermayim Chaim, it could be that we really don't have people that are like this anymore. Or we're going to talk about someone who says Lashon Hara, the Messiah Lefi Tumo, meaning he's talking to you, and as an aside, he mentions something, a negative thing about somebody else um, in the course of his story, and it's clear that he wasn't trying to denigrate the person, he was just talking randomly, and he slipped that in, because uh, it was relevant to some other topic. He wasn't meaning to say that, he just kind of let it go because it was it came up as an aside. So maybe he's more believed more. We'll see. Or if there are other contributing factors which lead you to believe the story is true. Because we said, if you remember, that one is not allowed to believe Lush and Hara is true. But we're going to discuss now these other things. If it's heard from a trustworthy person, if it was Messiah Lefitumo, or there are other things that maybe indicate that the story is true. Even though most of the laws are the same, so he says this, even though many of the laws are the same, there could be that there are some details which are different, so he's going to go through every one of these topics and explain. <coughs> The prohibition to listen to Lashon Hara is even if someone tells you who is extremely believable like two people. He's a very trustworthy person. So I, he's asking, we said earlier in chapter 4, Halacha 5, that if someone is a very trustworthy person and is no, he knows his teacher will believe whatever he says because he's very trustworthy, and he saw and he saw somebody do something wrong, he's allowed to go to his Rebbe and tell him if he's a very trustworthy person. So now he's asking, how can you say that even a trustworthy person, it's you're not allowed to believe a Lush and Hara, um, that he says, because earlier we said that this trustworthy person is allowed to go and speak Lashon Hara about, um, about someone who was doing something wrong to his Rebbe, and the Rebbe is even allowed to hate him because of that. So, So he says that, which we were talking about earlier, that you're allowed to tell a Rebbe something, is when we're talking about a person who has done a sin many, many times, right, not just once, where he's done a, I'm sorry, no, sorry, he did a sin once, but it was a very bad sin. It was something that everybody knows is a problem, like adultery or something like that. You're allowed to tell his Rebbe, maybe his Rebbe will correct his ways. So in that case, a person who is believed, like two people, is allowed to tell the Rebbe. Like the story in the Talmud of Tuvia, that uh, Tuvia saw one of the students who was committing adultery, so he told the Rebbe. Um, so, right, but that doesn't apply where someone violates a sin where you could judge him favorably that maybe he didn't realize it was a sin. Because again, you're allowed to tell somebody uh, that someone's doing a sin. You're allowed to tell his rabbi to correct his ways when the sin is something which um, everybody knows is a problem. Or, right, okay. Oh, Ulai. Or maybe he did it by accident. Right, 
right? So all the other things, like if maybe the person did the sin by accident, or you're talking about something he did in the past, which he might have done shuva for, or something his relatives did in the past, you're not allowed to say any of that. So, right? The my havi im hadav raze eno shaker mikar afu pikin asur atar la masapra la sabri gnusu avraze rak le donal tzedek. Well, the makabel gamkin asur la hachle belibo as chaver al ignos avraze. And he writes that even this person, all of these things, it's forbidden to hear, right? If the person, you know, did a sin that was not, <clears throat> well, not something that was known to be a sin, or his ancestors did something, even if all this is true, he's not allowed to say it, um, because there is no purpose. And right, maybe he didn't realize he was doing something wrong if it was a sin that he didn't know all the details. Mavad is erkabala, over alav the lifne iver, and besides for the prohibition. Of listening to lashon hara that this person gets, he's also over lifnei iver lo tite mitchell. You're not allowed to put a stumbling block in front of the blind. So if you're by you listening to lashon hara, you're enabling someone to speak lashon hara because the person who speaks lashon hara isn't going to speak lashon hara to the wall. and many other prohibitions also right we mentioned that lashon hara is even if the story is true okay like we said that the person's only going to speak lashon hara if somebody is there to listen to it so in addition to the prohibition of listening to Lashon Hara, one gets all the prohibition, all the other prohibitions that we mentioned in the introduction. Let's go on to Halacha Ches, number 8. Even the story of Tovia. So the story of Tovia in the Gemara was, Tovia went to one of his Rebbeim and said, you know, one of your other students committed adultery, and the story was true. But Tovia got uh, lashes for it because he shouldn't have been telling him because he wasn't believed like two people. Kabbalah. So now listening now listening to Lashon Hara, even when it's something like that, you know, something very bad, he says that it's uh, someone's committing adultery, you're only allowed to believe it with two conditions. What are they? One, Dafkim only if the person telling it to you saw it himself, but not if the person heard from somebody else. Two, So again, we're talking about a case here where you're going to someone's teacher. And he did a sin which was very, very egregious, like adultery. And you're telling the Rebbe what happened. Now, what is the, when is the Rebbe allowed to believe this about his student? So, and what is he, how is he allowed to act in this information? So, one, he's only allowed to believe him if the person who's telling him saw it himself, but not if he heard from somebody else. Two, the Rebbe, when he hears it, is not allowed to go tell other people but he is allowed to distance himself from this student until he repents. Once he repents, then he should uh, hang out with him again. But the idea is here, now again, this is all actually believing it, right? You're usually not allowed to believe Lashon Hara at all, right? But you're allowed to be choshish, like we said, meaning someone tells you that uh, so-and-so is a thief. You don't believe he's a thief, but you don't have to go into business with him. Here we're actually talking about a permission to believe him what's going on. So when is a Rebbe allowed to believe his student who tells him something? One, the student's believed like two people. He's extremely trustworthy. Two, he saw hit him, the action himself. Three, um, the Rebbe's not allowed to tell everyone else. And four, the sin that we're talking about here is an egregious sin that everybody knows is a problem. But again, this halacha really doesn't apply so much because... Um, You know, there aren't, the Chavetz Chaim kind of says that there really aren't people that have that level of trustworthiness. Now, in general, we talked about, I'm just going back here to chapter 4, halacha number 5. Uh, we mentioned that if you see someone doing a sin, you should approach him first and try to get him to repent. 
and speak to him about it. And if, but if you see he's one of those types of people that doesn't listen to rebuke, you're allowed to speak to his relatives uh, to try to get him to do the right path. And again, that's where it's a sin that everybody knows is a problem. And he says, if you're the type of trustworthy person, then you can go to his Rebbe and tell him. Now, why you need this super trustworthy person to tell his Rebbe, but it doesn't seem like you need that to tell his relatives, I'm not entirely clear. I was trying to look into that last night. I didn't, I didn't get it clear. But I would think that if someone gets this information, again, we're, we, the, the leniency we were just discussing now was to actually believe it. But if someone gets this information about somebody, he's allowed to be choshish, he's allowed to worry about it, um, but he's not allowed to believe it. So it could be that he's allowed to be worried about it. He can go to the person, and again, not tell him who told him the information, but you know, if he sees a, a toalis, a purpose, he could rebuke him to try to get him to do uh, the right thing. And again, when you're when you when you are telling somebody again when he does when he does this uh, you know very bad sin, you should have in mind to you know you're not trying to make him look bad. You're trying to get him to you know help his path. Okay, so that was a little confusing. Hopefully tomorrow the topic will be it'll be a little better and I'll be able to explain it better.